Hey guys, hi, how are you? In this video, I will cover my Tesla Model Y performance solar chip experience for the first 10,000 miles. I will also talk about all the things that we like and dislike about our Model Y. Had feelings faded away? Do we continue to love it? Will we buy it again? How long do we plan to keep it? And I also want to share thoughts about like full self-driving, the shrinking range of my battery and all that stuff. The first negative thing will be the ride harshness. The ride is rough. The current price of the Model Y, the way this is optional with the performance package and the white interior is $65,000. That's a lot of money. So when I compare this to the way a comparable price SUV drives, the Model Y loses by a lot. I mean, and no, I haven't changed my mind about how I feel about this car or the ride quality. I've always found the ride to be rough. And this time after 10,000 miles driving it, I just want to make it abundantly clear. And it is that the suspension is hard. It is a hard suspension, plain and simple. The seats are super comfortable. Seriously, among the best I've ever experienced, to be honest with you, but they can only do so much. Range, the Model Y performance has an EPA range of 303 miles, but in real life it's far from it. I can count on about 200, 250 to 260 miles of range on a fully charged battery. And that is if I drive conservatively, and by that I mean driving uh, mostly to the speed limit, being easy in the gold pedal, and on mostly uh, flat landscapes. So I would say that the real life range falls short about 15% of the EPA rating. And with electric vehicles, range is a very big part of living with the car and trying to have a normal life. By the way, the fully charged battery now gives me 291 miles of range. So that's a loss of about 4% for the first 10,000 miles. At the 5,000 mile mark, our Model Y full range was 296 and now it reached 291. On the fastest charger available, our Model Y can charge from 20% to 80% in about 15 to 20 minutes. So that's pretty good. And that's usually what we do. I mean, we just go from 20 to 80 and avoid wasting time because after 80%, it just takes forever to charge to 100%. Full self-driving. We ended up canceling our monthly subscription. We got the FSD subscription right when Tesla first came out with it. And at the time we bought this Model Y FSD capability was offered for $10,000. I didn't get it back then because I felt that it was too much money and now it's $12,000. At $199, I still think it's worth a try. We canceled it because we just wanted to cut back a little. I mean, we're planning to get it again for this spring because we have some road trips that are planned and that's where we like FSD, that's where we like to use it. And I do think that FSD is a great feature to have. And what we like about the subscription is that you can just get it, pick it up, drop it at any time. So you don't have to commit to that $12,000. FSD doesn't make our Model Y drive itself. It's not autonomous driving. The name is misleading. And I frankly don't know how Tesla gets away with calling it autonomous driving. I'll leave you the link to a very interesting video regarding FSD and how it is really far from reality, from just becoming a thing that really drives itself. No, and keep in mind that at $12,000, you will need to keep your Tesla for about five, four years before you come even with the month to month subscription. So I, what I would do if I were you, I will just take a close look of how long you hold on to your vehicles to figure out if buying the feature outright for $12,000 make sense for you financially. Some of you tell me that this car is very bland. I can agree up to a point. Some things that we need to consider is that these electric cars don't need any sort of grill. So when I see other competitors that are coming out with their vehicles, they make it more appealing by adding just fake ornamental grills that are not needed in the car. I don't know how I feel about it. I do miss that part of the aggressiveness that you can have in a vehicle by adding scoops and adding just like a fake vent here or maybe like a, like a grill here. But those things represent the past. They're not needed in the car. It's like missing, I don't know, like a radio antenna in a car. They're not needed anymore. So I think it's gonna be a period of adjusting uh, for just normal people that wanna see an electric car and they wanna see the things that they used to see in their internal combustion engine cars in these electric cars. Like for example, would I like to have like a dual exhaust here? Of course, they look so nice, right? But these cars don't need it. Another thing that I was gonna mention is do I regret getting the white color? Honestly, no, because I do like white cars. A lot of my white, a lot of my cars have been white in my lifetime. And um, the fact that this was a free color for Tesla, uh, yeah, I mean, every time I go charge it, there's the majority of the cars that I see, they're white. 
and you need to pay a premium to get the nicer colors but it just makes for a simple easy to keep clean car i mean it, it hides the dust pretty well and same thing i think it extends to the interior the interior may be a little bland as well because it lacks a lot of things that we're used to seeing in cars but at the same time when i'm in a hurry to clean it this is so easy to clean because it doesn't have any intricate vents and all that stuff it's just you just get wipe it off and it looks pretty clean right i mean i haven't detailed this car and you can see all my mess you also ask if these seats are easy to clean to keep clean and they are i have two dogs and sometimes they move this protecting towel and then i have that stain but it will come right off with just a damp cloth it's just this vegan interior what is it vegan leather interior it's just that convenient to me no regrets with this white interior and i like the simplicity because it's easy to keep clean i was expecting a little bit more wear on these tires and they're holding up pretty good i had a it's not a sports car but i had an is 350 and it had very aggressive front tires and i was only able to get about 19,000 miles off the front tires i mean they just wore off so quick and my idea was that these tires being so low profile and the fact that this car is always either braking or accelerating i thought that it was gonna use up the tires a lot faster but it hasn't been the case you hardly use the brakes in these cars because of the regenerative braking it just makes it so cool because you don't get the nasty brake dust on these dark wheels and at the same time you're preserving the rotors for a much longer time i just i i can predict that this car is not going to need a brake job anytime soon other than that um, i do remember curving the wheels right when I got this car and I just haven't done so and this was the one that I told you that they gave it at the mall it's right here was met with the wheel so I try to avoid parallel parallel parking because remember this car doesn't have a 360 camera and yeah you have the trajectory lines and all that <laughs> I just don't trust them so I try to, to avoid parallel parking as much as I can um, I still like the car I still find it very, very practical, fast, cool, and my wife loves it too. So, I mean, we both equally like it and we don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon. Some of you that have followed my channel know that I, on average, I keep cars for about a year and a half, two years on average, but I think I'm gonna keep this car for at least, while well, I have those three miles. So I think I have 31,000 miles of free superchargers supercharger use so it's more like um, maybe like I have like 20,000 more miles and if I'm averaging about 10,000 miles per year I think that I'm gonna have this car for three years because it will make no sense for me to get rid of the car and just give up uh, free charging right unless I was gonna replace it with another Tesla so it sucks that the from the program went away and about the maintenance for this car so far I love it that for the first 10,000 miles I haven't had to bring it into the service centers i mean not that i like it because when i went i didn't have a great experience when i went with my friend but just the fact that this car doesn't need anything at the 5,000 mile mark or 10,000 mile mark is so cool and even some traditional dealerships they ask you to bring it in for a bogus 1,000 mile service where they offer you like a free loaner they make sure you live with a smile so that they can earn your future business well you don't have any of that with this um i hate it you know i remember the days where i will bring in my car for service and then let's say call for a oil change and filter and they try to upsell you stuff this side of the tesla experience has been huge and like no other from the beginning just a set no haggle price um, no hidden fees at the time of purchase no extended warranties being shoved on your face no overpriced dealership installed options especially nowadays where many traditional dealerships are asking for huge markups over msrp on their limited inventories just so annoying it just nothing just a seamless transaction and the dynamic was extended to the ownership experience with no traditional scheduled maintenance visits and speaking of which i'm just pretty thankful that our model y hasn't required any warranty claims i the only i only had a couple of issues and one was that the lights were misdirected so i talk about it on this video there might be an issue with the headlights on our model y as many drivers on the oncoming traffic thought we had our brights and it got kind of annoying with so many of them shining their high beams at us and i was just able to fix it with the steering wheel controls um, the other issue was at the 10,000 mile mark just last week 
the phones stopped pairing and that was really annoying because it wasn't just on the phone side we had to reset the main screen for 10,000 miles this has been just a reliable non-eventful car and we love it so so far the maintenance costs have been zero dollars and as far as charging cost i'm still using the referral miles that you were so generous to use my link for and uh, so it has been less than 200 dollars and i still think that a home charger will be the best and most convenient things you can do to yourself when getting this car but since i have so many free miles i just don't want to spend the three thousand dollars that it will take for me to install one on my condo because i have i live in a condo that has a common garage and i have to have it uh, perpetually installed i really like this interior it doesn't get old i like the you know the charging pads right here i just like the lack of things that i hardly ever use would it be nice to have an extra set of uh, manual controls maybe maybe yes because this screen continues to be distracting up to this day and uh, another thing is the over-the-air updates <laughs> they just keep coming and for me that I'm, I'm i'm an old dinosaur i just don't like technology changes for the sake of it and just when i'm getting used to, to a particular layout they change it and i have to take a crash course before i drive away i remember that a couple of updates ago they got rid of this profile driver tab right here and you have to find it on the sub menus i'm glad that it's back unless i'm wrong and then this cool thing where, where you get to change the color of your of your avatar oh here software you press this thing right here and then you change the color of your car and i think it's cool because some of you that like to customize your your wrap it on vinyl now you can get to match the color of your core wrap to your avatar my case is boring white so let's leave it back to white the sitting position is optimal the panoramic sunroof offers great views i mean it never gets old it makes the car feel very open and roomier than it already is the audio system is wonderful i mean seriously in my opinion i think that it sounds just as good as what other premium brands offer as an upgrade um, and in this case it's the only offering from tesla so even if you were to get the basic tesla you get the top of the line sound system. Um, it has what, 13 speakers and a subwoofer and two amplifiers, where, but, sorry, but there's always a but. It doesn't come with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, and that to me is a joke. Most, if not all premium brands, offer these at least as an option, and I just don't understand why Tesla still doesn't offer it. It, it reminds me of Lexus, how, how long it took him to start offering uh, Apple CarPlay. I love the heated seats and the heated steering wheel. Usually this comes as an option in other car brands, but it is stock in our Model Y, so that's pretty cool. Other stuff like power folding, auto dimming, side mirrors, dual wireless charging, music streaming, and stuff that in other car brands usually reserved for expensive option packages comes stock in our Model Y, so that's pretty cool as well. So when you get in the car, you just have to select your driver profile and everything adjusts to your liking, as with the exception of the annoying uh, rear view mirror uh, which is just not powered simple things like the car's ability to prioritize a cell phone over another one is just really cool it switches between phones uh, between me and my wife so when my wife leaves the car my cell phone takes over and i just think that's really cool and those are the little things or the big things that make the driving experience such an uh, such an enjoyable one but the fact that you have things like an internet browser spotify netflix and youtube make things like recharging times more bearable and one of my favorite things about this car to this day is the handling. Do not be confused with what I said about the hard suspension. I mean, a hard suspension is not a choice. It's, it's something that you get with this car, and there's no amount of upgrades that you can do in this car that will give you a, a better, smoother ride. Um, on the other hand, it does drive pretty sporty. Um, it's, it's very predictable. The all-wheel drive system does wonders. I always know what the car is going to do. And, and that's pretty good. I mean, the center of gravity is slow, it drives pretty sporty, the steering is very precise, very well tuned. I just wish it did a better job at, at isolating you from the road. Uh, those of you that have owned, for example, Mercedes and BMW know that BMW is always tuned more for like a sporty feel, so some may consider it bumpy. And Mercedes is always more refined, more luxury and this doesn't have any of that so do not confuse this car with the luxury car because it's not it does give you a premium feel experience for different reasons 
maybe the fact that it's just a different type of car, a different kind of company, um, the exclusivity of the higher price. I mean, all of the Tesla vehicles are above the average price of a new vehicle. I think the average price now is, is like $40,000. So with Tesla, older vehicles are expensive and more expensive. And this at $65,000, sometimes I feel that when I get in a, somebody else's vehicle, I feel in silent. I start comparing how nice a Mercedes feel in comparison to this. And I'm talking about just, you know, just a, a mid-range Mercedes like a GLC. My relative has a GLC. And when I, get in, when I got in that car, I, I remember what it's like to be in a luxury or a premium vehicle. I mean, I have experience with BMW, Mercedes, Audi, and what they do with the, the treatment of the isolation from the road, the deadened materials that they use, the double glasses and all that, it pays, it pays out at the end when you the driver gets in that car and once you hit the road, you just feel isolated from the road, you feel in a special place, so the drive gets a lot more enjoyable. And this car is loud. I mean, there's no way around it. Um, at the 5,000 mile mark, I made the mistake of saying that, that you get used to it. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, you can get used to a lot of things, right? So just because I got used to it doesn't mean that it's good. Um, but if there was one thing that I could change about this car, it would be like an adaptive suspension. From But from what I hear from people that have the Model X, they say that even with the with the adaptive suspension, uh, the ride is not smooth at all. So maybe it's just in the way these cars are manufactured. And um, I I driven other uh, like for example the Mustang Mach-E, and I find the suspension to be very very sloppy, very bouncy. So in that, I do think that the Model Y ride quality is better than that of the Mustang. But when I compare this to a Mercedes, uh, a Lexus, BMW. This one is not as nice as, as premium feel. If you are into that type of feeling, then I suggest you exploring to the Audi e-tron. The e-tron starts at about $66,000. So the base model of the e-tron starts at the most expensive uh, model Y. So with options, it will climb up another $20,000. So yes, the model Y has that advantage to this day. They're charging infrastructure is, is, is unique and exclusive so those of you that come from an internal combustion engine car thank you great driver this is the easiest smoothest transition into an electric car because you're gonna find uh, chargers everywhere you will always have a charger available for you regardless of where you are especially here in California they're everywhere the infrastructure is there so I always feel that I can just pull over in a few miles and recharge again and that's not the case with other brands so when I hear that Tesla, uh, and I'm going to talk about two things here that are important for this video. When I hear that Tesla is going to get rid of the, or, or going to open the charging network to other brands, I just feel that that's one more cut that is going to make Tesla vehicles feel less special. One already happened when they got rid of the referral program because, and don't take me wrong guys, I'm very grateful that over 30 of you used my referral link to buy your Tesla. So I have free miles. To spare but it was just one that was one of the things that made Tesla unique it, it makes us drivers owners feel that you own a special kind of car because of those little things like the referral program you know I, I'm just an average Joe that decided to to start posting videos about his car and here I go 30,000 miles worth of free uh, charging and it's gone and now if they were to open the network to just everybody else, I think it will feel less special because as it is right now, even though it's a, it's a great uh, charging network, some of these locations are starting to get crowded. I'm no stranger to experiencing, for example, a 45 minute charging limit for a Tesla and some cars will take over 45 minutes to charge. So imagine if they were to open these chargers to just any other brand of car, then just the waiting time will be longer and then you will have less time to charge your car and you'll be competing for a spot with just anybody else. So that's one thing that I'm gonna ding Tesla for is getting rid of the referral program and the possibility that they open the charging network to just anybody else. Would I buy it again? Absolutely. This has been the best car ownership experience that we had. When we replace it with another Tesla when Tom comes, 
I don't know. Uh, you need to see what's out there from Tesla or any other brand when it's time to replace this car. Will it be replaced with another electric vehicle? Most likely, yes. I think I can see cars in the same way I did before we had our Model Y. Electric vehicles just make much more sense, and especially now with gas prices hovering at the $6 per gallon mark. But please let me know in the comment if um, how you feel about what I just said, my arguments. Do you agree? Do you feel that I'm being too harsh with our Model Y? I want to hear from you. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.